Hey guys, we are here today for episode two of Where Has My Power Gone? Now we're doing a couple things this episode. We are going to do a deeper dive into where that boost leak might be. I think it's somewhere in the cold air intake from Integrated Engineering that I bought because that is when that boost leak kind of started to appear, it felt like, and I lost a little bit of performance. I don't know, we'll figure it out. But what we're gonna start with, it's actually not power related, it's brakes related. This was something I had on my mind for a while, and I pointed out in my first video, but I wasn't too concerned with. But then if you look at the old rotor, it's gotten a lot worse. It's actually gotten really, really bad. Getting it off was quite the hassle. And this new rotor, it's gonna do so much better. Along with that, we are gonna press the piston in the caliper back in, plus we are gonna grease the slides. On both rears, we've actually got two calipers. It's a rotor. What am I doing? Eh, I make mistakes all the time, it's okay. But I've got two rotors that we're gonna be putting on the rears because both of them kind of look like this. Um, we're eventually gonna upgrade these to slotted, but these will help us out immensely for the time being. And we're gonna see if maybe that's holding us back a little bit, that rear brake. And we're gonna see if we can reseat all of the connectors on the intake to stop that boost leak and really get us down the road in as fast of a zero to 60 times as we can. So let's get this on and go check out the engine. All right, after a saga that somehow included a decaf coffee tin and fire ants, we have the piston pressed back in. There is a full install video on those rear rotors right there. That has all the gaffs in it, all the fun. Uh, you actually won't hear about the coffee tin and the fire ants in it because that was not filmed, so you'll hear about it in here, but it's still an adventure. Had a hard time getting this pressed back in, but as part of our power solving issue, we're gonna make sure these pistons are pressed in and those slides are greased. It's all part of the job. Didn't think I'd have to completely remove the caliper to get the old C-clamp trick to work, but it worked and I had to, which just makes more work later. Definitely gonna have to re-bleed the entire braking system just to make sure we're up to snuff, but it is not gonna be dragging us back from this one, at least yet. Gotta do the other side still. We are really trying to make sure we are getting down the road quickly, dropping that zero to 60 times as fast as we can. We're actually working on a tune uh, sometime in September, whatever month you're watching this. If it's past September, then I've already got it. If not, which actually this might come out late September, so I'll probably have it by the time this comes out. I don't know. Posting videos is weird. Filmed very far in advance. But it worked. We are chasing zero to 60 times right now. We're gonna go to the drag strip eventually. Still got a lot of stuff to figure out just to make sure we're running tip top, but we're doing good. We're gonna get the other side redone with a new rotor, press the piston in, then we're gonna hit up the engine and find out if we can figure out if there actually is a boost leak or one of my friends even noticed when I came off throttle, I was at negative 0.5 PSI and that might be my half PSI boost leak is actually a misreading of the app. That's a possibility. It really is, I don't know. I know these brakes were not helping. After a while, they were fine for a bit. Not a lot of brake dust, so I wasn't concerned with them. That's usually a tell-all. Some uh, brake pads actually have a lot less dust than others, but seeing where this piston was pressed in on the brakes, I could tell there was probably some level of, of drag on these rear rotors, so we're getting that fixed with some new boys. Then we're gonna do full pads and rotor service later. These are cheap interims, but we're gonna get to the other side, we're gonna get that fixed, and then we're gonna go to the front and maybe see if we get down the road a little bit quicker and decrease at zero to 60 time. So now that we've got the brakes taken care of and we've given them enough time to properly bed in, we're back at the front of the engine. We're mostly gonna be taking a look at the intake and some of the couplers there, they're just regular hose clamps. So we're just gonna reseat all those, make sure that there is no air getting by. 
right down there by the turbo on the intake is really where I want to fidget with and make sure it's seated properly because it was kind of difficult to get in there. It's a very tight fit. So we're just going to make sure that's all set, all good. And then we're going to get back out. We're going to get the phone out and we're going to track pressure again. Now I have a theory as to why it might be 6.5 when factory is supposed to be seven PSI, but we'll talk about that once we get in the car. So now we're going to get here and reseat all these couplers. So here is the engine bay in all its beauty. But I think the culprits are right down there. You can see that's right where the turbo goes in. It's a reducer, and since I can't even get a good view on it, you can tell that it is very cramped back there. It was very, very difficult to get all of that to sit properly just because there's stuff right there. So we're going to go in. We're going to get that taken care of. And then one of the other things that I want to fix too that hose clamp you can see is very, very wonky. Uh, reset that a couple times so it wouldn't hurt. But we're just gonna go through, get all of these properly situated, just so that we know the boost leak isn't in the intake. When I redid the lightweight pulley, I didn't redo it, I put it on. Uh, down in there, the turbo outlet pipe we situated really nicely it's too dark to even see anything so that's good we redid that so we're going to get up in here hopefully we've got some boost pressure back ah oh, car scanner has been hit with the subscription bug it was just getting it all connected i don't know if you can read that probably not on your phone says boost available in car scanner pro i literally just used it like a month ago for boost why why do you have to do this to me why i don't want to pay for this i really don't Let's see if i can find a way around it okay um might have found a way to still get into it question mark all right we're gonna see what our boost pressure is i don't know how i it's working it says it's only available in car scanner pro but it's reading something so we're gonna run with it at about six and a half still. That was closer to 6.8. Um, yeah, that was 6.8. We're getting a reading, so that's good. And it's similar to what it was before. So I think it's probably fairly accurate. All right, I'm gonna try holding it down for a little bit longer. Let's see what it does. Peaks at 6.5, comes down just a touch. Got back up to 6.5, okay. third gear. Ooh, close to seven. Pressure really peters off towards the top end of the rev range though. But still, it was closer to seven than it was before, I think. I can't actually see a number, but I can visualize it. Yep, under more load, there gets to be a little bit more pressure in there. Second peaked at 6.5, third peaked at uh, like 6.8. Anyways, here's my theory on why we seem to be a little bit down. Now it's not, it's not a lot. It's not like there's a real big boost leak if there is one, but I'm wondering, this is a stretch in terms of it's actually like plausible. I'm wondering if the programming in the turbo with how much space there is now with chemistry, gas laws and stuff, to get that same pressure, it has to work so hard because there's so much space now in the intake system that it actually under this programming can't produce seven PSI 
and the closest you can get is about 6.6, 6.7. So that might be why it's there. We've got too much space in there for this current programming to actually push the turbo to 7 PSI. Now, I know that's a bit of a stretch because these turbos are capable of producing much more PSI than just seven. And I'm wondering if that's even true or not. It, it probably isn't. It's just, it's just a thought, some weird thing that I was thinking about one night about how there's so much air needed in this intake system now to create seven PSI because there's so much more space. And when you increase space, you have to have so much more air to get the same amount of pressure that I was, I was just like, I wonder if the program just can't get the turbo to keep up right now. Of course, when we get it tuned, which is happening very soon, that should be null and void. It'll, it'll get there. It's gonna be like just full send on the boost, bro. Have at it, good times. And I'm looking forward to that. But right now, we still seem to be lacking a little bit. I was interested to see that we actually got closer to seven PSI visually. I've got no number to back it up, just how it worked for me to actually even get a reading on the car scanner app. So I think reseeding some couplers actually helped a little bit. I mean, but I mean, it helped. It, it never hurts to reseat stuff like that. So, I mean, if anything, it was always going to do was help and might have done. I mean, it it is what it is. We're getting it tuned and I'm very, very, very excited for that. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. We are on a saga to get my power back or find out where that boost leak is, if there even is one. But I wanna say thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, have a great day, and remember, Jesus loves you. Bye.